Hello, can you hear me? Cool. So yeah, as mentioned, we're going to talk about consumer spyware, which is the sort of malware just anybody can buy. We're not talking about cops, FBI, although it will come up a bit, but totally ordinary people who can intercept emails, text messages, that sort of thing. So I'm Joseph Cox. Uh, I'm from Motherboard, which is the technology and science section of Vice. I cover hackers, cybersecurity, digital crime, the surveillance industry, all that sort of thing. And uh, I'm Lorenzo Franceschi Bicchirai. I also work for Motherboard, and uh, I also write about hackers and uh, cybersecurity. And thanks, thanks so much for being here. I see you. That's the message that Jessica received on her phone when her ex-husband put malware onto her Android device. It could get her text messages, her GPS location, and we're pretty sure her emails as well. Uh, in one particular instance, she was at a dinner with this ex-husband, just with friends, and she was texting another man that she had sexual relationships with. Uh, the ex-husband who's intercepting these messages is clearly getting annoyed. He's visibly uh, pissed off about something. Later on, the man sexually assaults Jessica, and during the assault, brings up the text messages that he had intercepted. So this is clearly a really visceral, egregious example of how digital and physical security can meld, but it's only one of many. So we got that because we received data, and then we went through, and we investigated that incident, and then we spoke to Jessica as well. But this started years and years ago. So someone would send an email, it would have a bit of malware, you would download it to your Windows computer, and it would then get all your activity. So we're talking like 10, 15 years ago. In the UK, a man put malware onto the wife's computer and then stalked her and actually ended up killing her uh, by stabbing her. And then you also have men who will uh, snoop on the internet monitoring, uh, snoop on the internet activity of their wife or their girlfriend, or whoever it may be. Like, their mobiles come in. And clearly, this is a lot more valuable information. We all carry around a tracking device in our pockets pretty much 24 hours a day. With that, you get the GPS. With that, you get the phone calls and the text messages and everything else. I mentioned the sexual assault case and then maybe the domestic violence case and the stalking. In this one, the man put the malware on the phone to then get a leg up on the divorce proceedings. So he could hear what his then soon-to-be ex-wife was talking about and he could abuse that way. And then you have other examples, again, on the mobile as well. So it may look like that's a small problem. That's just a handful of media reports. But again, these rarely come into the public. A study by NPR in the US and the domestic violence shelter, they found that 75% of shelters said that they've had someone or one of their victims was eavesdropped on by apps like this or pieces of malware. And then 85% were being tracked by GPS. So, Clearly, this is a much bigger problem than you may realize just from the few examples that are already out there. So what is this malware that some people call stalkerware because it's used by people to stalk on their loved ones? What, it, what, it, what is it? What does it do and how does it work? Um, you, have, you basically have to think about it as just another app on your phone or computer. Um, and it's pretty easy to install. You just need physical access to the target phone so if the person wants to spy on their loved ones, they just need to get a handle of the phone, uh, unlock it, which may be a problem. But if you think about the situations that Joe just described, these are people that know intimately each other very well. They share a house, they share a room, they share a bed, and they probably know each other's passcodes. Or maybe they saw it once, you know, when one of them was unlocking their phone. And all you need is a few minutes. You get the phone, you go to the website of the provider that you want to use. Uh, here you can see two. Um, the one on the right is Phone Sheriff from a company called Retina X. They're all more or less the same. You go to the website, download an app, uh, install it on the phone. Sometimes you have to like uh, switch off um, some protection for Android. But once that's done, you install the app, you go through some permissions, you allow the app to access all kinds of information, and essentially you can you see everything that the phone sees. Uh, Joseph himself, himself tested this on his own Android phone. 
he installed one of these apps. Uh, I think it costs like $180 for a year. Uh, Which annual. is relatively expensive. You can get them cheaper yep. than that. Yeah. yeah, there's some for $60, $50. Some of them offer free trials to, so that you can try it. And our editor, Jason, Jason Kebler, was able to get photos, uh, listening on conversations uh, that Joseph was having. And this is what the stalker, or the attacker, if you will, sees on their phone. You know, it's a table, neatly organized. You can see the uh, text messages, uh, GPS locations, and it's, you know, you don't need to be very good. You just, you just see everything right there. So we bought two pieces of malware, as you saw, but there are dozens of companies in this space. Just to like, list a few almost random examples, Truth Spy, XN Spy, Heister Mobile, Hello Spy, Moby Stealth. Now, quite a few of these will market to spy on your wife or your husband who, or whoever, but with Moby Stealth, you'll notice here it says, oh, this is for children and employees only. Uh, so I phoned up Moby Stealth and asked, hey, can I use this to spy my wife? Yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, do I need her consent? No, you just need access to the phone. So even though they say this is for children and employees only, that's basically a very weak uh, legal disclaimer because plenty of these companies are going to know how their malware is actually being used. So how did we learn about this industry? How did we go in about uh, digging through this sprawling industry of like dozens of companies that offer the same thing? So last year, um, a group of hackers provided us with a, a bunch of data from two companies in particular. So this was data that was stolen from one company based in Thailand called FlexiSpy. You may have heard of it, pretty infamous. And one based in the US called Retina, Retina X. Um, and the, when the hackers gave us this data, uh, we were presented with a set of challenges that were pretty unique. We cover data breaches all the time, but this was a little different. Uh, the main issue was that we really needed to handle this data very responsibly. And that's because most of the data belonged to uh, victims, or in, ca in some cases, people that didn't even know that they had been spied on. And we were very aware of the fact that we did not want to victimize people again, expose their personal data, um, and we decided pretty early on that we didn't want to identify victims unless they agreed to be identified. And uh, the hackers themselves actually did not want to do that. They never, they gave us limited data, even though they had probably access to more. They told us pretty clearly that they didn't, did not want to dump the data publicly to expose people. Um, so it was really on us to not to do that. We, don't, we didn't want to be responsible for that. Uh, at, the same, at the same time, we had to work on the data and figure out if the data was real. So we had to contact users, in some cases victims, to verify the data, and also try to understand what was the story behind the data. Why were these people using this, uh, these apps? And the other challenge was to handle our own sources responsibly. That meant not encouraging them to hack more or commit more criminal acts uh, because we didn't want to be uh, conspirators, essentially. Yeah, don't do that. So, don't yeah, never do that. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, we, had, we wanted to ask them for help uh, figuring out what the data was, since they knew it so well, uh, having taken it. And we talked to them, we learned their motives, and we explained how the hacks happened. And uh, I think one of the best examples of how we had to deal with this was the story that we included in one of the first uh, articles, which was the story of a woman who used a Retina-X product on her husband, who we will call John the Cop. Uh, we had data from them. Uh, essentially, the story, as far as we could understand from the data, was that the woman uh, subscribed to this Retina-X product called Phone Sheriff, ironically enough, and she used it to spy on her husband. Uh, she put it on his phone, and for a span of three or four months, uh, she took all kinds of data, um, SMSs, uh, text messages, emails, and even intimate pictures. Um, and we wanted to, we thought that this was a good example of how people use this data, but we were very careful not to uh, damage the victims even more. So we contacted the woman, uh, tried to get her version of the story. She never answered to multiple emails and calls. Um, we were able to verify her identity because of the data that we had, numbers, uh, her name. 
we established that they were married. Uh, we never contacted the, the cop, the husband, because we just didn't know if it was like we were like, you know, uh, getting in the middle of their relationship, essentially. Uh, so once we were not able to um, talk to them, we decided to still include the story as an example, but we anonymized it as much as possible. We changed his name, that's not his real name. We never mentioned her name. Uh, we didn't say where they were from, and we didn't include any personal data in the story. Uh, all we included was this text uh, which said, I love you. Yeah, I mean, just to add on that, there's obviously a public interest in writing about these companies and how it's used, but there seems to be very little public interest in specifically screwing up one person's relationship or really focusing on that. That's just a completely unnecessary um, step when you're handling this sort of data. But as for what the data actually looked like, they're the two companies Lorenzo mentioned, FlexiSpy, so email addresses, but it's mostly company data, like financial spreadsheets, communications with other companies, and like some credit card data as well. And then the Retina Rex stuff, which is the John the Cop story, again, that's more customers, even their GPS locations for thousands of people, um, the text messages, the photos, all that sort of thing. So focusing on FlexiSpy, which is definitely one of the most infamous companies in this space, this kind of gives you an idea of what they're trying to do with their product. Know everything that happens on computer or, smart or smartphone, no matter where you are. They just want to get everything on the phone. Um, this is from an internal roadmap. We didn't make this. This was actually from the hacked documents. But, you know, 2006, they're doing Symbian stuff, then BlackBerry, and then they move on to Windows, and then they move on to iPhones and Android. Just You can see that as mobile phones and smartphones obviously become more popular, the people who are making this malware need to pivot a bit, and they need to go from desktop to um, mobile. Just really, really briefly, some of you may be familiar with a company called Gamma, which made malware called FinFisher. That's for governments, law enforcement intelligence agencies. They sell that to like Bangladesh and Bahrain and other nefarious customers. This is a document showing that at some point, FlexiSpy may have had a relationship with Gamma, making some sort of server end code or something like that. Um, it's difficult to say how strong that relationship was, but there is clearly an overlap between these people who are selling to authoritarian regimes and then the people who are making the malware just to spy on your husband or wife or something. Right, so that catchphrase from FlexiSpy, catch everything on the phone, they're not being sarcastic. WhatsApp, Facebook, Viber, Line, Tinder, Telegram, Yahoo, BBM, SMS messages, MMS messages, fake, send fake text messages as well, if you really want to do that for some reason. Remotely switch on a microphone, get the camera going in FaceTime, and you can see who they're talking to, um, voice over IP, record the calls, listen to live calls. Basically, again, as Lorenzo mentioned earlier, everything that's happening on that phone, FlexiSpy is probably going to be able to get hold of. In their marketing material, uh, as opposed to Retina and the Rex and the, maybe the Moby Stealth, which is like, whoa, whoa, this is only for children and employees, FlexiSpy is a lot more explicit. So in this text message, it says, oh, hey, sorry, you can't come over tonight. My wife is home early, which is clearly trying to market towards like, the infidelity uh, crowd. So Lorenzo showed that little table earlier, which has SMS and GPS. FlexiSpy is even more idiot-proof and powerful. So you log in to your little web portal, um, login.flexispy.com or whatever, text messages, emails, GPS, completely idiot-proof. You can really get around all of this data quite easily. And then you could even use an app if you wanted as well. So the attacker installs that on their phone, they're walking around, and they can track their target. So going back to the whole very explicit spying on spouse, another of their phrases is many spouses cheat, they all use cell phones, their cell phone will tell you what they won't. I mean, really, really overt. And, sorry, just to go back to that, after we published our investigative series, FlexiSpy then scrubbed all mention of illegal spying and spousal spying from its website. You can still dig it up if you want, but clearly they thought, oh, this might get us in trouble, we should probably get rid of this, because as we'll go into, this sort of behavior is clearly illegal. And people are using it to spy on their wife or their husband. This is from an internal FlexiSpy survey where they asked their own customers, hey, why would you be interested in some phone spying software? Over 50% say it's, I think my uh, partner may be cheating on me. And then you have children and employees and that sort of thing, but clearly the majority want to do this to spy on their wife or husband. I mentioned that the, the FlexiSpy data was more about the, com the company itself. Behind the scenes, this sort of marketing is reinforced. These are the 
search engine optimization terms that FlexiSpy was trying to capitalize on. Cheating wife, how to catch a cheating husband, uh, ways to expose a cheating husband. So they would obviously try to, maybe their blog posts or their website, use these terms, and then maybe they could get higher up in Google results if someone searches one of these. And they also try to break into the Russian market. Uh, this is just the same sort of terms, but in Russian, it's unclear if they were actually successful. There's another document that says, we're trying to get into the Russian market, here are our main competitors, and there's something like four or five. But clearly, it's a global thing. And with that in mind, here are at least a selection of the potential companies that are selling FlexiSpy. So if you go to Spouse Busters in Australia, and you buy their malware, you may actually be buying the FlexiSpy code. It's just been sent to them, and they put a different name on it or whatever. Israel, India, Australia, Thailand, Brazil, Nigeria, Greece, Argentina, quite a few Turkey ones. So this is everywhere. It's not just a US or a UK or a Germany problem. It's really, really all over the world. So who are, who are these people that are using this software? As, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we did contact some users. We had their email addresses. So we reached out to them and said, and asked them, did you use this software? And if so, why did you use it? Why did you want to um, stalk and spy on your, why did you use this for? And surprisingly, some of them were pretty honest and blunt. Um, you know, one of them said, I bought it to see if my boyfriend was cheating. Another one said that I used the service to confirm that my ex-girlfriend was cheating on me. It allowed me to get a remote audio recording of her in the act, which presumably meant like while she was with somebody else. Uh, someone else, even more surprisingly, simply answered, oh, yeah, this is normal. This is what couples do, which is totally not normal. You know, this is not OK. Uh, but this gave us an idea that you know, this wasn't just marketing. This was how people use the software for. Um, and we also, as, as we dug through the data, we ourselves uh, felt a little creeped out because we were able to read some messages that you know, we should never have read and no one else should have read. But here we can, you can see an example of um, a victim of abuse talking presumably to a friend about how her partner uh, or their partner beat, beat them up. Um, she's saying, I'm going to call the police, but I can't call the police. Another one says, uh, did you hear that my partner hacked me? Uh, I think that's how he tracks me. Uh, so this is like, and you know, this is not, this is regular, ordinary people, people like us, uh, people like you. Uh, we're not talking about amazing Russian or American hackers. These are like regular people that just download an app, install it, and use it. Uh, we were able to identify a fifth grade teacher in Washington, D.C., a professional dog breeder in the U.S., the president of a sunglasses distributor, Again, average people using a very easy-to-use app. And depending on the context, I mean, if those people are doing it to monitor their spouse, they're probably going to be breaking the law, at least under US law. So if you take a phone and, and you install malware on it without consent, that's probably going to violate the uh, Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, which is the US hacking law. And then if you're intercepting text messages or emails, that's probably a wiretapping violation as well. Um, a few people have been prosecuted, and then some have been convicted. This is when, in 2014, the DOJ went after someone who planted malware on a police officer's phone, kind of similar to the John the Cop um, instance. But talking about law enforcement, and I, I said this malware isn't for law enforcement, it's more for ordinary people, but there is still a crossover where we find members of the FBI or TSA or ICE or the Army or the Navy have bought some of this malware. So it's not clear if they're doing it for official use. I mean, the FBI can use malware in an investigation. If they get a warrant, that's fine. That's not a problem, generally. Um, but maybe they used it to spy on their wife or something. Maybe they were the ones doing the uh, illegal activity. But obviously, that's very hard to tell when you only have the customer uh, information. We're going back to the global thing. So as I said, the, the companies themselves are global, but clearly the users are as well. So from the Rat and the Rex data, we took those GPS locations. I wrote a quick little Python script just to obfuscate them a bit, because obviously we, we don't want to dox completely random people and uh, reveal their location when they're being abused. But you can see it's heavily concentrated in the US and then Europe, and sort of trickles through Southeast Asia, a bit of India, Australia, only a tiny bit in uh, South America. But all of these people are using this malware for some sort of reason. And in all, with the FlexiSpy and the Rex, the two main companies we're talking about, 130,000 people had accounts. 
So that's typically going to be 130,000 targets as well, 130,000 people around the world being tracked, having their SMS and their text messages and everything else intercepted. And then when you add in uh, data from two other companies that we got later on more recently, there's probably a few, a few more 10,000 on top of that, but we haven't really confirmed that yet. I'm still working with the data. And the other company, we spoke about FlexiSpy. The other company that we uh, dug into was called RetinaX Studios, as I said. And they made a product called Phone Sheriff. And they were interesting because unlike FlexiSpy, they never marketed uh, their um, stuff for jealous lovers. But at the same time, their users, as the woman that we spoke about, used it for that purpose. Uh, they were also interesting because when we approached them, they denied being hacked, or rather, they didn't answer initially. They tried to cover up the hack. Um, and they also, they even sent us like a slightly veiled legal threat telling us to stop doing what we were doing, which was reporting. And give them back their data, which is quite novel when you think about how data works, but yeah. And eventually, um, this was last year. Then this year, the hacker uh, breached their service again and basically got the same data, showing that the company didn't really improve their security. Um, and after we reported the second breach this year, the company decided to shut down uh, indefinitely. So they're effectively dead at this point. Um, and we don't know what's going to happen to the companies. Uh, right now, we don't have any information whether there's a criminal investigation against them. Uh, in the United States, as Joseph said before, as long as you market for employees or employers or parents, you should be fine. The only time when someone who was selling this software was arrested was the case of Stell Genie, where the founder of the company was uh, arrested and fined half a million dollars because he was openly marketing for jealous lovers. Yeah, and then just briefly to finish, um, when you bring up this issue with random people in the information security industry, and I'm obviously not pointing to anyone specifically, they'll say, well, this is really lame. You have to install it on the phone physically. Um, it's not exactly the sexiest code in the world. Why don't you just not give your passcode to your partner or just put a passcode on your phone if you don't have one? That would be to completely ignore and neglect the actual threat that these people face. As Lorenzo mentioned, this is a physical access thing where they're in the same bed, the same room, the same building. You can just look over the shoulder and then maybe you get the passcode, something like that. Maybe if you remove the malware, the abuser will get violent. And then maybe the issue escalates. It's an incredibly complex security problem that, that people in the InfoSec community haven't necessarily tried to grapple with. Um, I'll just say, we're journalists, not activists, but we get asked this a lot. So as journalists who are interested in security and cybersecurity, here's really, really generally what you may be able to do uh, if you're under threat. First is seek professional help. Every case is going to be different. That you have no idea how much privacy the individual has. Maybe they're not even allowed to leave the house. Maybe they had to put the malware on um, when the boyfriend said, hey, look, I love you. You should install this if you really, really love me. And that was one case that was described to us as well. So that's definitely the first thing, get professional help. But if you really want to check, look on your iPhone, see if it's jailbroken. You can't put this malware on an ordinary iPhone. You have to jailbreak it first, which is essentially lower the security settings. Same for Android, look for suspicious apps, maybe a settings app in the dashboard or something that shouldn't be there. You could try and factory reset the phone. Unless they root the Android device, just wiping it will typically get rid of it. That might be harder uh, for the iPhone and the jailbreaking, depends. And potentially be careful not to alert the stalker you found out. Again, if, if you go to someone like, hey, can you help me if my boyfriend's stalk uh, stalking me, and they remove the malware, well, then the guy may just get really, really pissed off. And physical violence is obviously going to be a little bit worse than um, digital uh, stalking. Seek professional help. So that was it. Uh, I don't think we have time for questions, but that's our signal, our jabbers, our emails, our Twitters. If you want to chat about domestic violence, stalking, malware, any sort of surveillance injury stuff, uh, just let us know. And if you do want to ask a question, just grab us at some point here. Thanks a lot. Thank you.